Hello and welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Investing Club. I'm your host, Gabe Peterson, and this is the place investors go to gain actionable advice, learn about current market trends, and hear war stories from other professional investors out there in the field today. Before we get started, I have two quick housekeeping items for you. First, if you like this episode, we would very much appreciate a like, subscribe, and share. It is the best way to support the show and keep it running far into the future. Second, if you're a new investor looking to get started in real estate or an experienced investor looking to take your investing to the next level, I've created an ebook just for you that will cover how to find deals that are actually deals, how to finance those deals with little to no money down, and how to exit those deals for maximum value. On top of that, I throw in an insane amount of free bonuses that you'll have access to once you buy the ebook. All I charge is our admin costs to keep this show running. So if you're serious about real estate investing and want to create both active and passive income as an investor, head on over to the website at therealestateinvestingclub.com and click on the button that says, get the ebook in the upper right-hand corner to grab yourself a copy. With that said, let's dive right in. Today, we have a very special guest with us ready to drop some investor knowledge on you. So buckle up, grab your pen and paper and enjoy the ride. All right. Welcome back to another episode of the Real Estate Investing Club. Today, we have Brian Driscoll with us. Brian is a real estate investor, digital marketer, and SEO expert, co-founder of Motivated Leads, a digital marketing agency that helps real estate investors expand their portfolios quickly by generating quality, motivated seller leads. And I've said it so many times on this podcast that getting the deal is one of the hardest things about real estate. Once you find a really good deal, it's really hard to screw it up because the money's already there. So I'm excited to talk to Brian. Brian, thank you very much for hopping on the show. Hey, thanks for having me, Gabe. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, I told you before we got on here, we always start with stories. So why don't you take us back to yours? How'd you get started in real estate? Yeah, so my story, yeah, it got back right after, like right around high school. And I, I didn't get involved with real estate until like 15 years later, but my dad took me to a seminar. It was uh, Ron Legrand. I don't know if you know him. No. <laughs> One of those old timers. It was a seminar. They're selling their courses in the back of the room. So I'm listening to the whole day spiel, all that kind of stuff. And I, it got my wheels turning on getting into real estate. I went to the back of the room, bought his course for like 1800 bucks, which is a ton of money back then. Yep, yep. And, uh, I got into, I tried doing real estate, tried doing, uh, putting news uh, ads in the newspapers and it was a penny saver back then. I got calls. Oh, like, like actual newspapers, not like yeah, crazy. Like, oh yeah. Yeah. This was like, this was before that. Wow. And, uh, I love it. And I, I got a lot of people that call me that wanted to sell their houses. I just had no clue what I was doing because we were trying to buy stuff like sub two. And I just, I was clueless. Yeah. So failed miserably. Uh, go like 15 years later, I uh, was looking for a house. I saw some on Craigslist and uh, I was looking to move. I bought the property to move into and it was a wholesaler. Mm. And I, I'm like, okay, this is working. I saw what he made on there. And then um, I just kept my eyes open looking for properties. And I found a, another one on Craigslist. Saw they were making like 15 grand. And I have a strong digital marketing background. I'm like, I can get these deals myself. Mm -hmm. And then that, that's kind of how I got into it. And it merged with the marketing too. But uh, I kind of stumbled into it. My dad planted a seed years ago. And then it came back, came back like a long time later. <laughs> I love it. And I don't know how many people say that, you know, they, they start out, they go to those, uh, those courses or the seminars, they get the course that's absurdly priced and then they don't do anything for a while. And then I don't know, 10 years later, they finally jump into it and it turns into something. So even if you think it's overpriced, it probably is a good way to go. Uh, those, those seminars, they definitely work. That's for sure. So you got started, uh, you bought, you saw people doing wholesales, um, which is a really popular way to get into real estate, especially if you don't have a ton of money. Um, and you had a background in marketing, which is super helpful. I want to jump really hard into the marketing side of things because, I mean, I said it when we got onto the show, it, finding the actual motivated seller, finding the lead is the hard part of real estate or one of the hard parts of real estate. So um, kind of take us to your, your method. What is the way, what is the most effective way that you found to generate motivated sellers off market? Okay. So there's a couple of different ways you can generate leads. You can generate leads. Uh, you have SEO, which is ranking in the free section of Google. You have Facebook ads, which is paying to push an ad on Facebook. And then you have Google pay-per-click where you're paying Google to push your ads out in front of them. Uh, SEO is the cheapest 
but it's the most uh, sweat equity. You have to write a lot of content, optimize your website. You're not going to see leads for like six months from when you start. So it's really slow, but it has a really high return on investment once you do it. If you're looking for a quick win, cheapest way I'd normally jump into is Facebook ads. Hmm. Um, you can push those out. Uh, like you're ever in Seattle, Seattle's really competitive. Like the cost per leads, the high competitions up there. Um, but yeah, that's how, that's how I would jump into it. Normally like Facebook, then pay-per-click, then SEO, depending on budget, stuff like that, which I can run you through. It depends what you want to know. I can run you through like how to set them up or what the top things are. Yeah. Yeah. No. So, uh, when you, it looks like all of those are digital marketing. So you said SEO, Facebook, PPC, that's all digital. Um, do you do any, like, uh, any yellow letters, any, um, I don't know, uh, RVMs, text marketing, anything like that? You know what? I did do yellow letters before and, um, they worked really well. I get a lot of people screaming at me. Like yeah. a lot of people call. I had to people share. Are oddly angry about, <laughs> about receiving yeah. letters. <laughs> it's nuts. I, like they'd scream. I had, the, I had a, a cop call, like a sheriff down in one of the neighbors like, Hey, this lady thinks you're harassed. Cause they think I'm sending all the letters are getting, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I have done them before. Those were decent. Uh, digital gets a little bit better return on investment just because you're not paying the postage. And it's it's different. Like with mailers and stuff, that's an outreach, uh, outward marketing versus digital when you have someone coming to use inward, like an inbound lead. So it's a different okay. experience. Uh, I know a lot of guys that do text. I know a lot of guys that do cold calling. That's successful. Any type of marketing you do, if you do it consistently, I think you're going to have success with. It yep, just comes yep. down to what you prefer doing, how much budget and how much sweat you want to put in. Totally makes sense. Um, so since you're kind of focused on the digital digital side of things, let's uh, kind of kind of go down that route. Um, again, you said SEO, Facebook, PPC. Those are the three big ones. Uh, SEO, you said, was probably the cheapest, the hot butt. It, it costs the most in terms of sweat equity. Um, and then Facebook and PPC. And you recommend Facebook, which is uh, surprising. I used to do digital marketing. I, I'm pretty familiar with all these Um Facebook, I, I've tried it before and I didn't have as much success as I did with PPC. So what is it that you're doing with your Facebook ads that make them so successful? And let's, uh, I know everybody listening, and watching, you guys don't have a ton of background um, in digital marketing. So we'll try to keep this as, uh, as layman's as possible, but can just describe um, how you run your Facebook ads and why they're so successful. Yeah, cool. And when you did Facebook, what were you doing? Were you doing like lead forms or were you sending traffic to a website? I was sending traffic to a website. Okay, cool. So, so for anyone who doesn't know, you have different ways to market on Facebook. You have something called a lead form, which is when you see an ad on Facebook, you click it, it pops up a form inside of Facebook. Facebook pre-fills your information they have, and then you submit and that's it. Uh, that will get the cheapest lead and also the lowest quality, just because someone sees a picture of a house, they don't have any background on you, anything like that. So, and they pre-fill the info. So it's, it's very cheap, but also you're going to, you're telemarketing. What I prefer to do, there's a couple of different things you want to want to uh, keep in mind. When you, if you're doing Facebook, don't try tricking people. Like, be extremely direct. Don't don't offer home valuations, uh, stuff like that. Interesting. Okay. Uh, in your ad, say you're looking for motivated sellers, you're looking for flips or wholesales. In your ad, say sell your house fast, or we're cash home buyers, or we buy houses in Seattle or Pittsburgh or wherever it is. So it's it's direct. And in the ad text, be extremely direct. Once someone clicks that, send them to a website that also says the same things. Uh, we're not agents, unless you are. Uh, we pay cash. We're not paying top dollar, but we can make it convenient. Be really direct through that process. And then on the website, don't make it easy for them to submit their information also. Like you want to get, you have your phone number on there, obviously, but you want to get, you want to capture their email, phone number and address first. But after they submit that, ask like 10 more questions. Like how fast do you want to sell? How much works the property need? Why do you want to sell? I confirm it's not listed on the market. What that will do, that will um, create a motive. Like the motivated people will fill that out. The people that aren't uh, that motivated will drop kind of, off. You're weeding out the, uh, the higher quality leads. Right. Yeah. So you're trying to weed those out. And, and what I do, I take it a step even further. Once they submit through the website, I have an automated text message go out saying, hey, thanks for filling out a form on our site. Here's a link to my calendar for someone to come give you an offer at your house. Oh, and interesting. You, okay. Which also shows motivation there too, because it's like, if, if someone clicks my website and books for a stranger to come to their house and give an they're offer- motivated. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a good determination. They're fairly motivated to do that before even talking to somebody. Interesting. Okay. Um, so 
a few things jumped out to me when you're talking, you, especially when in your marketing itself, um, you said you're not paying top dollar, which I really like because a lot of, you know, um, flippers out there, they mo- their the market, the message they put out there is that, you know, we're going to give you a great price. And that's, that's just not going to be true uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, flippers, you're not going to get the best price if you sell to a flipper. Um, you're going to get the best price if you list it, but you're, you're also, it's, it's much more convenient when you sell to a flipper. So I like that you were, you're very direct with your message. Um, you, you're transparent. You're not going to get top dollar, but it's going to be convenient. So that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, and then a lot of questions. That's really interesting. So you're really just trying to put a barrier in front of you and the, the seller to figure out who is the ones that actually want to sell or that actually, you know, you're not wasting your time with. Um, so cool. I really like that. So how does that differ from PPC? Okay, so so Facebook, on let's talk about the bidding strategy. Facebook, we're paying on impression. So what that means is we're telling Facebook, hey, I have a $50 a day budget. Put my ad in front of as many people as possible in the area that I'm targeting. So it might cost us, say, $20 to get in, in our ad in front of 1,000 people or, or whatever it is. On Google, what we're doing is we're paying per click. So we're we're... Uh, saying, hey, Google, I want to rank for sell my house fast. Like that when someone searches sell my house fast, I want to rank there. I want them to click it and I want to pay you to do it. Uh, the difference is uh, Google pay per clicks extremely expensive because you're in direct competition with other investors. Yep. And I uh, remember you- when uh, when we were running ads, we were paying like 25 to $50 a click. It was just absurd. It was oh, it's insane. <laughs> um, and you figure like an investor mentality too. I mean, we're competitive. So it's like, oh, that guy just outranked me. I'm up in my bid (laughs) and the margins are big. So the guys that are doing a lot of deals, they have a, they can afford to spend more money because they can, they can ride it out versus someone just getting into the business, like $50 a click. That's insane. Like 10 clicks is 500 bucks. And if if you get a 5% conversion on your website, you're spending like, it's too much money to afford because then you have to get 10 leads to even get a deal. It just, uh, it's crazy. But Google pay-per-click does work really well. Um, Way way I like to do it is we'll, I'll normally set up a campaign for Facebook and then depending on budget, we'll set up a Google pay per click campaign also. Uh, the reason I like them both together, if I spend twenty dollars for a click from Google, that person has intent, like they've searched sell my house fast. They come to our website, they're not ready to fill out a form yet, and we retarget them on Facebook. So in retargeting, for anyone who doesn't know, it's like when you go to Amazon, you look at a pair of shoes and it follows you around the internet. We can do the same thing with uh, on our websites. So if someone comes there from Google, they come to our website. We know you want to sell your house now. We're going to live in your Facebook feed. So when you're ready and comfortable out of like information gathering stage, you're going to see us and know us because you've just seen our ads for the last week. Yep. I love it. <clears throat> All right. So uh, this, this question, um, it's not going to have a, a clean and clear answer, but I want to ask it anyways. Uh, I know a lot of people out there listening, they, want to figure out how to get leads because that's that is the way that you make money in real estate is is bringing leads to you um so what is someone you know if they wanted to go down the the path of seo or sorry facebook or ppc what are they looking to spend what is a a reasonable budget um for them to expect to get say one deal done so uh, well normally i look at average acquisition cost is like three to five grand Okay. Um, that I see across the US, like San Diego is more expensive, things like, like real competitive areas. But the average I see expect to spend like three to $5,000 per deal. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're just going to jump into Facebook and try doing it yourself, though, I would start with a sl- smaller budget and fi- like figure it out. Start with like five bucks a day or 10 bucks a day. Just learn how it works. Um, and if you are going to do it, uh, a couple of tips I can give you that I see a lot of people making, put a Facebook pixel on your website, put an event tracking and what that is, that's the code that allows you to make an audience. Uh, put, in, put an event on the thank you page because Facebook's algorithm allows you to track people and they, they start learning uh, what type of people you're trying to get in front of. So not, for, not, not to go to too far down the rabbit hole, but I see that when I see people wasting so much money pushing Facebook ads to a website without the tracking, which will, is just a waste of money. Perfect. And I'm going to, before we jump into the quick question round, I want to stop us here. Um, I know that you guys do marketing for investors. You help them out. So what's a good way for someone, you know, if they wanted to get started in real estate, they wanted your help, what's a good way for them to get in contact with you guys? Oh, sure. You can just go to our site. It's motivated-leads.com. And yeah, just go there. You can fill out a form or just give a call. Perfect. Pretty pretty simple. Easy, easy. 
All right, uh, we just passed the 15 minute mark. So I'm gonna push us into the quick question round. Uh, are you ready? I'm ready. Cool, cool. Starts out with books. I'm a big bookie, um, but I've kind of changed it over the years. Uh, instead of books, we're just gonna do any form of education that you like. If it's podcasts, if it's YouTube, whatever it is, give me two recommendations, one for real estate specific and one for uh, general life wisdom. Okay, uh, real estate specific. I like bigger pockets. I like following those guys. They have a lot yep. of information on their um, on their blogs and their speakers. Uh, best book on education: Richest Man in Babylon. I don't know Oof. if you ever read that one. I just finished that one. I I'd never read it, and then so many people told me to read it. And literally, like uh, I I read it on a, on a flight when I was going out to a property. I think it was last month. Good book, yeah. man. Really good uh, quality message. Five Laws of Gold. I live by that, and it's made me so much money and saved me from so many so many mistakes. Yep. That's a good one. All right. Moving on. Um, this one is for your younger self. So if you could go back to the Brian who had no idea about real estate, um, he hadn't even gotten to, uh, to digital marketing yet. Go back to him, look him in the eye, give him one piece of advice moving forward. Jump in earlier. Like, like just, just take action. Cause when I was younger, I wanted to just keep learning it. It's like, okay. And some people may relate to this too. You just want to keep learning and you don't feel like you're ready yet. So you just keep learning and trying to gather it. And uh, I would tell myself, hey, just do it. Like, yep. just go in, jump in, figure it out. Because you're, because what I've learned now is um, the more, like when you jump in, even if you don't know it, you will figure it out because it's going to put you the trajectory and down the road. So uh, that's what I would tell myself. Yep, yep, yep. That's really good advice. I was actually just thinking that yesterday. I, I was flying out to a, you know, I'm in commercial now. I'm doing bigger projects. And I was just thinking like, man, I wish I had just gone bigger earlier because I started out with wholesales and then single family. And I just stood, you know, I stayed down that path for a long time. If I had just gone bigger earlier, but Hey, tw uh, I sir, wait, hindsight is 2020 and that's the case right. for everybody. So if you're out there, you're doing small, you're, or if you haven't even jumped into real estate yet, just do it. Just take action. Just get out there, start getting dirty, which moves us to the next question. And this one, I lost my place. Give me one second. All right, there we go. Um, it's about the United States. It's a big place. There are many square miles out there to invest, which means there's a lot of different places that you could put your hard earned dollars. What is one place that you are most excited? That's not in your backyard that you're most excited to invest in. You know what? That's a, that's a question. Cause I only invest in my backyard. I know, like, I <laughs> I know. you said that earlier and I was like, Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So, so like if I look, cause I have, I have interesting data cause I get to see like the lead cost across the whole United States. I know uh, down in fl mid Florida, like around Orlando uh, is pretty hopping right now. And it's it not, it's not as not super competitive. San Diego, Salt Lake city is extremely competitive. Uh, mm. Seattle's really competitive. Salt Lake city. Huh? Interesting. Yeah. Salt Lake city's uh, like insanely expensive to get leads over there. Huh? Uh, okay. So I don't know if that answers your question there, but yeah, so I, said, I did. I'm, I'm going to take Orlando out of that. That's the, that's the place you'd go. All right. Cool. I like it. All right. Moving on. This one is about, okay, this is an opportunity for you to brag a little bit because every single person on this planet is gifted with something specific that they are you know, uniquely good at, um, and you are no exception. So brag a little bit. Tell us what is it that you are exceptional at? What is your, your strength? I'm pretty good at the, on the marketing side, but then I think my one main strength is mentality. Like just mm. uh, keep, keep trying, keep failing. Uh, I got this thing. I always tell myself, it's like, whenever you fail, I did it, learn this a long time ago. I just say, you just got to try one more time. And then you, you just like keep that. getting back up, keep going. So I'd say like, out of knowing everything, that is the one thing that would be my number one strength, which is not quitting. Cool. I love it. You just got to try it one more time, no matter where you are. Just keep telling yourself that just try it one more time. That's good. I like that. Okay. So which brings us to the last question. Um, you've already covered this, but I'm going to ask it again. What is a good way for people to get in contact with you if they want to reach out and talk about uh, marketing? Yeah, sure thing. Yeah, just go to motivated-leads.com, either fill out a form or give us a call. Perfect. So that wraps it up. Brian, thanks for hopping on the show today. Hey, thanks, man. It was fun. Absolutely. For everybody who's here with us today, thank you guys for showing up. You are the reason we do this. So if you guys have any questions whatsoever, reach out to me, Gabe at the Real Estate Investing Club.com. Other than that, hope you guys have a great week. Keep rocking real estate. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Real Estate Investing Club. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode as much as I enjoyed putting it on and were able to pull some actionable advice that you can apply in your own investing today in the field. 
Before you go, we have a gift for you. If you're a new investor looking to get started or an established investor looking to invest, take your investing to the next level, I've created an ebook just for you available on our website. This ebook, ebook will cover how I was able to create both active and passive income in real estate with very little money to start with. In it, I will address the three most often cited obstacles new and veteran investors run into by showing you how to find deals that are actually deals, how to finance a deal with little to no money down, and how to exit those deals for maximum value. And if you get the ebook today, I am throwing in a bundle of bonuses, seven of them to be exact. The first one will be the off-market lead generation blueprint, which will take you through the exact systems and processes we use to generate off-market leads like like clockwork, which is the most important skill when it comes to creating wealth in real estate. The second bonus is the A to Z REI systems and vendors guide, which will allow you to peek under the hood of our business and see the exact tools, systems, and even the vendors we use to see the success that we do. And the third bonus is the top 100 best performing keywords pack, which is which will give you the exact keywords we use to target motivated sellers online using PPC ads. The fourth bundle is, or the first fourth bonus is our contracts bundle for wholesaling and renting real estate, which will give you access to all the contracts we use in the field to execute all different types of transactions. After that is the investor's quick analysis calculator and offer tool, which will allow you to quickly calculate whether a deal is an actual deal and will allow you to create an offer automatically with, from those calculations. This is a lot of uh, a lot of bonuses that I said. I'm just going to keep going down the list. Number six is the investor's daily success tracker, which is a tracker you can use to ensure you are taking the right actions day in and day out to reach your financial goals in real estate. And the last bonus is the wholesalers template for quick assignment cash, which will give you the templates we use to present our wholesale deals professionally and efficiently to our buyers. Whew, that is a bundle. So it's a mouthful. You get all of those bonuses for free when you download the ebook. All we charge is the admin cost to run the show. So if you're interested in the ebook and the bonus bundle, head on over to the website at therealestateinvestingclub.com. Click on get the ebook bundle at the top of the page to take advantage of that deal. And with that said, I hope you have a fantastic day and even better week. Keep rocking real estate. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. <laughs>